What's up, y'all? Welcome to the second devlog for Dinner B. Admittedly, it has probably been too long since I've made my last devlog. Maybe it's only been a couple weeks, but I will say that working solo on SaaS applications, uh, especially with a full-time job, sometimes it can be pretty hard to prioritize building your SaaS, uh, especially after work and you know with all the other things that I got going on in life. So sometimes it's a good thing that I don't have a project manager or product manager yelling at me telling me that I got all these deadlines but at the same time if I don't have deadlines sometimes I, I procrastinate and I don't work on things. With all that being said I do have some updates that I want to share with y'all regarding my progress on Dinnerbee and I think originally I had kind of hoped to have a an MVP by now. I'm definitely not there, but I am almost done with the like main core feature of the application and I'm pretty happy with how it's functioning. I definitely still have some things to clean up style-wise, but yeah, I just kind of want to talk you through the things that I've been working on. If you haven't seen the last uh, two devlogs, so I have devlog zero and one, uh, I'll leave them in a playlist down below so you can check those out. But at the end of the last devlog, I was working on the calendar feature for my application. And this is really the core feature. Uh, so essentially this is couples are able to schedule out their meals uh, for the rest of the week. And this is something that I've been putting off for a little bit, never worked with calendars and styling them and you know adding functionality to them as well. Um, but I decided on a nice uh, library called React Calendar. And honestly, it's been going pretty well in terms of styling it and then getting all the functionality that I need out of it. The place that I ended up uh, landing at the end of my last devlog though was that I was missing a handful of endpoints that I needed to make this page work as it needed to. And so those endpoints were a get all of the meals by a calendar ID. So users are able to uh, create calendars this might be like a dinner calendar, for example, and then they're able to assign meals to this calendar so that they're able to schedule them throughout the week. And for some reason, I didn't have an endpoint to get all the meals uh, for the calendar. And I need this to populate the days on the calendar with a little card that indicates which meal is going to be for that day. Additionally, I needed an endpoint to search for a specific uh, recipe. In my application, a recipe is associated with a meal. And so when a user is going to create a meal on the calendar, they will search for a recipe and then add that recipe to the meal and then create the meal for that calendar. So since the last devlog, I have created those two endpoints and I've also hooked them up to my front end and got them working with the calendar. So I'll hop into my computer right now and show you how things are working. Alrighty, so I'm on the homepage right now for Dinner B and I always have some preloaded data whenever I boot up the application. And so for this, I have a calendar. So this, for example, could be my dinner calendar if I'm a user. And if we click into that, we'll be greeted with a, a nice calendar. I do still want to do a few things in terms of styling uh, to clean this up a little bit, make sure that the colors uh, match what they're supposed to match, and then maybe do some more with the header up here, especially when you click into like specific months. Uh, I think this can be cleaned up a little bit, but I really haven't touched it at all so far. This is kind of out of the box right now, which is pretty nice. So I have a meal that is preloaded for August 17th in here. Uh, and so the title of the recipe that is associated with this meal is just yummy recipe. So that's what a user will see. They'll see the title of their recipe and then they'll be able to click into it and we'll see that this is the recipe that we have for uh, 817. We're able to click into that recipe. So this is really nice. It'll take us directly to the um, directions and ingredients that are required to prepare that meal. And if we go back, we are able to also just close this modal. And if for whatever reason we wanted to delete that recipe and then try and add a new one, we're able to delete that. Uh, I do have to add some loading and then a refresh. Um, but if we refresh and we go back over to 817, we'll see that that meal no longer exists. So all of that works out pretty well. Um, but what if I want to schedule a meal in advance now? So say that it is my turn to cook on Monday the 16th. We will see this different modal pop up. And this is saying, hey, let's schedule a recipe for uh, September 16th. At this point, we're able to search by a recipe name. So the only recipe that's in my database right now is one with the title of uh, yummy recipe. And so if we just search for yum, and this is that search endpoint that I was talking about before, we'll see that my yummy recipe uh, comes up and we are able to add that recipe to the day. 
similar to when I try and delete a recipe, I need to add uh, some, some loading and then a refresh to make sure that this is actually propagated to the user. Um, but I click the add button and now this recipe should be scheduled for 916. And unfortunately, as you can see, it gets scheduled for 915. And all of this information is still the same as before. This is all correct as it should be. The only thing that's incorrect is it gets scheduled for the wrong day. And so this is a bug that I am currently trying to fix. It's just something with my backend and how I am sending dates from the client over to um, my server. And obviously something is, is just either in a wrong time zone or wrong format or something. And it's getting, no matter when I create a recipe, it's always getting scheduled for the day prior. So that's the main bug that I gotta fix right now. So like I said, those are the main features that are needed for the calendar and scheduling aspect of the application. Pretty happy with how things are functioning. Obviously, aside from that one bug, I'll be working on that coming up shortly. And I'll be doing just some minor styling adjustments as well uh, to make the calendar look as appealing as possible. Once those two items are taken care of though, I'll be moving into probably the actual most important feature of the application, which is allowing a user to invite a guest user to a particular calendar so that they're able to view the recipes in the schedule for the week as well. That's kind of the main draw for Dinnerbee is that it is a meal scheduling assistant for couples or roommates or anybody who needs to cook meals with another person. But I don't want to have the guest user have to pay for the application when the original user has already done so. So that's where this guest user piece of the application comes in. And so I'll be working on that next. Uh, there's a few pieces of it that I don't know exactly how they're going to look yet. In terms of UI elements, there will be a button somewhere on that calendar page that will allow a user to invite a guest user. But I just want to show you real quick my thoughts on how this flow will work from a backend perspective. Okay, so I kind of touched on how this feature is going to work, but this is the guest user flow and it will all start from the calendar and on the calendar there will be a button that uh, a, a regular paying user is able to invite a guest user to their calendar so this might be for example if I have the application I might be inviting my girlfriend to join the calendar and interact with it without having to pay for it so this will pop a dialogue where the paying user is able to enter in the guest user's email so once a user uh, sends the email over to the guest user, it'll have a special link over to a special signup page specifically for guest users. There will be some additional information in this link, such as uh, an ID for a calendar. So a guest user will be linked to a single calendar. They're not able to join more than one calendar. So whenever a, a guest user gets created, it'll be associated with the calendar that the request uh, initially came from. Right now, my thought is that a guest user can only be associated to one calendar. Um, but if I'm allowing a regular user to have three calendars, it, it may be beneficial to have that guest user be able to be associated to all three of those calendars. So that's kind of just something I'll test as I go along. Once a guest user is created though, they do have access to this calendar and they can view all the recipes. The actions that this guest user is able to take at the moment are they're able to view that calendar, view all the meals associated with that calendar. They're also able to click into the recipe associated with the meal so they can see the recipe details. Uh, at this moment, a guest user is not able to add additional meals to the calendar. The reason for this is that recipes are associated with a paying user, so a guest user isn't able to create recipes. Again, this is probably something that I'll visit down the line because some of those things could be annoying if the, the main user has to create all the recipes and maintain all of that. It can be a, a, a little tricky. So I'll be looking for feedback uh, from beta users at some point to kind of validate all the things in this flow. But at the moment, this is how I'm thinking about how it's going to work. And yeah, software is really just an iterative process. So I am pretty excited to see how users will interact with this and what improvements I can make going forward. So I think that flow will work out pretty well for what I want to accomplish. But I guess we will see. Uh, honestly, in software development, things 
very often do not go how you expect them to go. So, you know, I'm sure I'll run into some hiccups, but we will deal with those as they come up. I do have some travels coming up though. Uh, the next couple of weeks, I'll be traveling through Europe and uh, obviously won't be doing a ton of work on Dinner Bee. I am bringing my laptop so I can work on the plane. So I'm hoping by the time I come back, I'll have that feature all wrapped up. Once that's done, there's really not too much left to do, which is pretty exciting. I do have to hook up payments and make sure that user accounts are all you know functioning as I expect them to. But that leads me to my specific goal now. And I really need to give myself a goal to make sure that I am finishing this in a reasonable time frame. I already think that I've kind of spent too much time on this, but between making these videos work and travel, uh, things have definitely gotten pushed more than I expected. But my new steadfast goal for this is to have a full release version by the end of the year. We'll be doing a beta at some point, so I'm hoping that'll be sometime in November. And from there, find out any bugs and go for a full release by the end of 2024. I think these devlogs are a great way to keep me accountable, so make sure you're leaving some comments down below, uh, whether they're yelling at me for taking too long or some inspiration would also be nice as well. That'll do it for this devlog though. I'm definitely happy with the progress that I made on the calendar aspect of things. And in the next devlog, I am hopeful to show y'all what the guest invitation piece of the application looks like. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, thank you a ton for watching all the way through to the end of this video, and I hope y'all have a great rest of the day.